So as promised before, we were going to look at the conference finals, uh, but also really quickly, I know there's been a lot of interest on the Raptors side of getting a seven footer. I don't know, Blake, I don't know how your mentions are, but everybody, uh, you know, I think since getting defeated by Joel Embiid, um, and, and honestly, like obviously there was huge matchup issues. Um, people have been very stuck on this idea of getting a seven footer. Um, I, as I have said many times, Joel Embiid cooks seven footers the same way he cooks guys who are six nine. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, but having said that, though, there are two fairly, fairly available centers, I would say, um, or maybe even potentially available. Fairly available seems a little bit, uh, a little strong. Uh, in DeAndre Aiden and Rudy Gobert. Let's start with DeAndre Aiden, who is uh, a restrictive free agent. He famously did not reach an extension with the Suns last year because the Suns did not want to give him the max, which is what he was seeking for. Pretty standard stuff. Number one overall pick wants the max. Um, the Suns did pick him over Luka Doncic, by the way, which uh, looks hilarious in the wake of um, that that second round uh, series. Uh you know, but DeAndre Aiden was not able to get that extension done. The Suns thought a really good year, 64 wins, got the second round, lost game seven, whatever. He got benched in game seven, only played 17 minutes. Um, there were some clips I saw online of him, you know, not exactly playing with game seven intensity on defense and rotating around. And obviously, you know, there were some matchup issues against uh, Luka. And then after the game, Monty Williams said, you know, in regards to why did he only play 17 minutes, he said it's internal, kind of sparked sort of um, speculation that Aiden may be available um, now, listen, he's a restricted free agent, so he's free to sign any sort of uh, offer sheets. Obviously, you know, the Suns can choose to match it or not. Um, I think in, in any scenario, the Suns probably won't let him go without some sort of sign and trade. Right. Because there are it, it just are, sets them back too far to exactly. lose a number one pick. And and a, if not a max contract, guy, I don't think Aiden's a max guy, but mm -hmm. he's a good player. Yeah. And look, losing a good player. This is this is part of what hurts or not hurts but like this is part of the complication and part of the accounting for smaller market teams that aren't traditional free agent destinations or or maybe don't have a path to cap space otherwise is it's not or are cheap and have really bad yeah management. it's like look five years 177 million sounds like uh too much yeah for deandre ayton but it's not like if he walks you have five years and 177 million to spend on someone else it's mm -hmm. yeah it's your number one pick it's your rfa bird rights it's it's a tough spot, and you've got—I yeah. mean—you have to answer a tough question then too. Of like, okay, well, Chris Paul's only got one guaranteed year left on his deal, and he's looking pretty old these days. And then, okay, well, how if Aiton goes, and it's a more traditional sign of trade, not a like it's more on the sign side than a trade side. Yeah, what does that look like in terms of okay, what's around this Devin Booker, Mikael Bridges core? Because Bridges' extension kicks in next year. Yeah, Booker's obviously locked up mm -hmm. so how do you continue to add to that core to not waste prime Devin Booker years yeah and I mean not waste the the last of Chris Paul so it's a tough accounting for them where I think yeah if they're gonna let Aiton go I mean if I were them honestly I would let him wait out an offer sheet and yeah. just like see that look there are only five or six teams with cap space and even they might not be willing to max you and then see if you can get something a little lower done. But yeah, if if you if it's going to be a sign and trade, you got to make sure you, you're honestly hoping he goes to a decent team because then it's over cap and and you're looking at it, they need to send you assets to make the math work. Yeah, that's why the Raptors are an interesting hypothetical. I don't uh, I don't see the fit uh, necessarily. Like certainly not at that price point. Yeah, no, because, okay, so the the max for Phoenix to sign him would be like 177. Mm -hmm. Max for any other team to sign him, 131 over four years. Yeah. You mentioned already that he's probably not worth the max. No. Um, But then again, if you do pay him like a regular contract value, the Suns are probably like, oh, that's sweet. I'm going to match that now. Yeah. And so you kind of always have to give him too much money to get him away from the Suns. This is why scenario. RFA is designed to to help teams retain their guys. Damn it. Can't believe these millionaires the system works. might not get all of their millions. They the might just only works. get partially uh, a portion of their min millions. But no, I mean, I don't know. I mean, look, these are hard to construct. Um, well, here's here's the the way you look at it from a Raptors perspective, though, is it's okay. not just paying DeAndre Ayton thirty million yes, a year it's for also four years. Up real it, assets. Yes, it has to work under the cap math, and if he's making thirty million coming back, mm -hmm. it means you got to send out about twenty two million. Okay. You know, we'll see where Phoenix, where both teams end up in cap space after 
you know, it, it, we don't know the exact numbers yet, what everything will look like. Sure. But roughly, you're sending out $22 million. Okay, well, well, look at this. OJ Anobi and Ken Birch added together $22 million. Would you do that? No. Okay. So there we go. This conversation is short, actually. Like, I don't, like, maybe if it's Gary Trent in that deal instead. Why would the Suns do that? They All they have is guards. It's Gary Trent's, yeah. They have Gary's <laughs> Trent all over the place. Yeah, um, so this conversation is short. They have a Gary Trent, a Gary Son Trent, a Grayson Trent. Oh, man. <laughs> That's still one of the best stories. Man. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I don't really see a fit here in terms of trade. In terms yeah. of Aiton himself, like, yeah, it would be nice to have a guy with that kind of size who's 7-1 and uh, he's... You know, he's not elite defensively. He's improved as a pick-and-roll defender. He's a very good yep. rebounder, obviously. Super efficient within his role as a scorer. Yep. But I don't know that... Like, I have trouble seeing how Aiton jumps from being the guy this year who's probably... You know, his value on the court was probably about, like, 18 to 20 million, yeah. maybe? I don't see what scales in his profile to make him a 30-plus million dollar guy because I don't think... I don't think he has a skill set where you're running more offense through him and handing him more usage. Um, he's never had good passing metrics or anything like that. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really stretch the floor or, or no, he shoot. doesn't stretch the floor. No, he has shoot a little bit range game, but like not really. Like, come on. And then like defensively, like, okay, he's he's good at vertically protecting in a, some an often fairly conservative scheme, and he doesn't foul a lot, which is great. You but I don't, foe. yeah, is he, is he going to be able to execute the Raptors switchiness stuff? And is he, the bigger question is, okay, even if you were willing to live with a defensive center who doesn't execute the Raptors switching stuff, is he a good enough interior defender mm -hmm. yeah. to warrant making your base coverage more conservative to keep him around the rim? Yeah. And I don't think the answer to either of those things are yes. Yeah. And it's like, if he was a unrestricted free agent and you had cap space and you weren't sending out assets, I'd be like, sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's so money. That, He's about as good a player as you're going to get in free agency generally. Um, I don't mean to, like, say he's not a good player. He is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just he's not a max guy, and I don't love the on-court fit. Yeah, listen. Um, if you're going to say no to OG, uh, plus, I guess, Cam. Um, also, OG and Mikhail million. Bridges are the same guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of them is, like, way, like, thicker than the other guy. But, I mean, if like, in terms of role, the exact yeah. same. Although, I got to say, that team could be very interesting with only wings. Yeah. Yeah, very, very interesting. Because they're already really hard to stop offensively, although I don't know what the hell happened in game six and seven. But Yeah. Here's uh, the other thing with Aiden is that I just, it's going to be hard for teams to shake off that the Suns were better off with Bismack Biombo on the court. Yeah. In a playoff series. Yeah. Damn. He really JV. Okay, all right. Uh, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> potentially also available in trade um before we have this Rudy Gobert discussion two notes I have in here he turns 30 next month uh so uh bon anniversaire in, a, in, a, in advance to Rudy Gobert who will be turning 30 on uh, I think June 26 his contract is going to be 38 million next year 41 million the year after 44 million the year after that and when he is 34 years old 47 million guaranteed player option I mean, yeah, this is nasty. I don't even want to have this discussion. That contract is too big. Because it comes to me is like, look, I know the cap is going to go up and everything like that. So proportionally, it might go down. But realistically, I just don't think he provides this much value in a playoff setting. And you have him for so many more years. Yeah. Yeah. There are some other things with Rudy Gobert in terms of culture fit and stuff like that that are, you know, would you need to iron out as well. What does that mean? He's not a well-liked dude. <laughs> okay. And I don't mean, like... I said this on the morning show a couple weeks ago when it came up, uh, and someone someone texted in or tweeted at me or whatever. It's like, you, you talk like you know him. I'm like, I don't know him, but I've been reporting no, around this team long enough to, like, dude almost gave me COVID when I was in Utah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. But, like, you hear... Wait, hold on. You hear how players... Was that the game where he touched all the microphones? Was that against the Raptors? Yeah, I wasn't at that, but I was on that road trip. Oh, my God. And then I was at that Nick Nurse charity event when the world shut down. Wow, well, yeah. yeah. I was at the Norman Powell charity event when yeah. the world shut down. Yeah. Good time. Was that at the ballroom? That was at the ballroom. Yes. Oh, bowling. Downtown, yeah. Charity bowling for the Boys and Girls Club. Was a good event. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt Thomas, the best bowler there. Not surprising Mr. at all. Mr. 99%. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. he does look kind of like who's a bowler. The, the guy who's the best shooter and the best, like, short game in golf yeah. is also the best bowler. Sure. This is a finesse guy through and through. Yeah. It, it totally made sense. So the Gobert thing is, is I mean, it, the, an analysis is similar to. Aiton, in that it starts with what do you have to give up? And his yeah. cap hit is $38 million. So the answer to what you have to give up is Pascal Siakam or two of your other core pieces. Or 
if Utah is just like really, really thirsty for one of your core pieces, them and like a sign and traded Boucher or Thad Young or something like that, the math is really complicated. Yeah. The four Utah Jazz fans that are on Twitter have been Yo, doing crazy. some crazy things. <laughs> like, hey, like, oh, would and you do OG. Siakam and Barnes or yeah. Siakam and OG? It's like, no, the word and cannot be in any conversation no. about Rudy Gobert. And look, Rudy Gobert is probably the most impactful defensive player of mm -hmm. this generation in the yeah. NBA. Like at the let's say post yeah. post Draymond being at the say, elite. Draymond is ahead of him. Yeah, I don't I don't know that Draymond's still at that elite level. So, but we'll call him Co. Then yeah. Co. Most impactful, but he doesn't. Do like he had one field goal attempt in a major playoff game this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, his teammates were getting on the ball, you know. Yeah. Well, again, <laughs> there's a reason he's not a, a super that, yeah. well liked guy. Yeah. Um, but no, like he's when he gets the ball, he can dunk it, but he can't really handle. He you can't trust him in a ton of DHO. Mm -hmm. He doesn't pass at all, which is the way the Raptors project in terms of spacing, especially after a Gobert trade where you're probably giving up one of Trent or. Um, or OG Ananobi, yeah. your big has to be able to do a little bit of stuff for you in terms of fake DHOs or, or just putting the ball on the floor a little bit. He doesn't have any of that. He's always been really turnover prone. And then the big thing is like, is this guy going to be himself defensively when he gets to forget 34? When he's 32, is he this, still the same guy defensively? $47 million is a, it's, that's going to be the worst contract in basketball by that year. We got to put the ether beat over the last two minutes of, of the podcast where you just went in. I but, mean, it's not even going in. I, that, that's the thing. Again, it's just, it's, this is, if this this is just a situation. If this, yeah, isn't, right. if this isn't a salary capped league and we're talking about Rudy Gobert as a free agent that you could just add, uh -huh, sure. Yeah. But he doesn't really fit the timeline. I don't know that his game's going to age super well. And you have to give up an awful lot to get him. Yeah, yeah. Now, the counter to all of this is someone might say, well, Blake, if you don't think Aiton or... Gobert, all that possible. Who do you think is possible? And uh, we end the show there because yeah, the yeah, list no, of enough. like you're talking. I mean, I mentioned it when we were talking about Chris Boucher, like he's competing with Bobby Portis, Mo Bamba, Yusuf Nurkic um, in the RFA tier, like a Nick Claxton type. Yeah. Maybe you take a flyer on Isaiah Hartenstein. I don't think you get down as far as like the Drummond types. I think you just nah, man, don't bother on. at that point. You just lean into the six nine thing more. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's not there aren't a lot of options there. But at least those options are just money and don't require you to give up a piece of your core. Yeah.